everything you need to know about Stable Diffusion 1.5. Hello my friends, how are you doing? In this video I will show you how to download it, install it and use it with your web interface locally with Automatic 11.11. Now the first thing you need to do, and this is pretty important, is to go to this link for Automatic 11.11 and then download the newest version. Click here on the green button where it says code, download the zip, unpack the zip and then throw everything into the install folder where you have already installed your stable diffusion locally. If you have not installed automatic 11.11 yet, go to this link here to this video where I will show you the full process of setting that up. Also for everyone asking, please go here to that wiki link on the automatic 11.11 page and here you have guides for installation for NVIDIA GPU, AMD GPU and Apple Silicon. Also down here you have troubleshooting where you can read through different troubles and problems you might get. Now the important thing is when you have put everything into this folder, there is probably going to be a reset of your web UI minus user.bat. So open that up and in here you need to copy again the position of your Python source, so the exe file basically, and then save that so that you can start this. The reason why you need to update everything here is because the new 1.5 in-paint model does not work with the older version of Automatic 11.11. Now, how do you find the Python? You go here to your search and then write Python and it shows you this file. Right click here, open location. This is just a shortcut. You can see there's a little blue arrow here. So right click again, open file location. So this is where the actual X is. And then you can click up here. So this gives you the address without the file. So you can copy this over and then simply put this in here with the quotation marks. That's important. And at the end you have this kind of reverse slash. Here. You can simply copy that to the end, write python.exe and there you go. And then you simply save that and then simply double click on this to start your stable diffusion. There's also an automatic update process. I will make an extra video about that. Now, unlike in my old installation video that I linked you before, the models are now in the models folder, not just in the general folder. So you want to double click here and then here you have stable diffusion, double click here again and you can see here the different models. The one that's called model.ckpt, that is the 1.4 version that I have had installed before. Now let's go and see where to download these models. First you want to go to this link here. I have all of the links below the video. You need to make an account on Hugging Face. This account is for free, so don't worry. And then before you can download the files, this will ask you for your permission to access them. So give that permission and then you can start to download. For that, click here on Files and Versions. And you have two versions here. One is 4.27 gigabytes and called EMA only. This is what you use for creating pictures. And then the other one is 7.7 .7 gigabyte. And this is used also for creating pictures, but also for training different models, for example, with Dream Booth. So I would suggest you download both of them and put them here into the folder models stable diffusion. The stable diffusion in point file is on a different page, also hugging face. Also, this is asking for your access permission and you give that and then you click here on files and versions. Scroll down here and you see this file. It's another 4.27 gigabytes. So also download that and also put this into model stable diffusion folder. After you've done that, now you start Stable Diffusion by double clicking on the web UI minus user dot bat. After you've started it, you can see up here Stable Diffusion checkpoint and you can choose different versions. In case you don't see all of the versions, click here on this blue arrow and this will refresh that list so you can see all of them. Again, the model.ckpt, that's the 1.4 version. The other ones are all 
the 1.5 version. Now here's a cool thing you can do to try out different prompts and see how they differentiate. You can go down here to script x epsilon plot and there I would suggest for the x you set the checkpoint name and then for the type you set anything you want. I would suggest you choose the sampler because that is the sampling method up here and then you can simply write the names of these methods. Now for the checkpoint what you want to do is to go to that models folder and then simply click here and then copy this over without changing the name of the file of course that's pretty important. Write this in here comma space go back here check the next one select everything copy this over again put this in here comma and then again go back here and take the last one. So now this will make a comparison where it will load the different models automatically and create three different versions of that prompt so you can compare them side by side. And when you click down here on draw legend, this will also draw a legend for you with a x epsilon scale. And of course I have already done this for you. So I have created different images I will link them with a sample image where you can read all of my settings from the image and also these files here included so you can check them out in full resolution if you want to. So here you have the sample method, here you have the model and you can see that actually the version 1.5 and 1.5 EMA only gives you different results. You can see here this is vastly more beautiful and detailed than this original version here. Also here you can see in this example that the details here are more correct. The floor is better, the lines are more straight, but they are not perfect yet. So it's not like magically solving all of your problems. But if you have here the 1.4 version, you can see that there are a lot more problems in here with all of the lines and how the image is built. So here you have different other sampling methods like LMS and you can see there are also differences and I find these are very good examples where you can see for which kind of prompt which kind of model actually works best because it's not always the 1.5 version that is the best. In our next example we are looking at portraits. Again this one is 1.4, 1.5 and 1.5 EMA only. You can see when you compare them that you get different results and all of them can be pretty beautiful. So all of them have the same prompt, the same settings. All of these examples by the way are also using face fix. This is why the faces look so good in all of these examples. What you can also see here is that 1.5 is not automatically the better choice for the image. You can see here, for example, the bones in 1.5 are nicer, but they are pretty extreme and the face is more detailed in here. So that's pretty nice. But here the face looks softer. So it really depends on what you want to have. With 1.4 you can in a lot of cases see that we have here an extra character in the middle. So that is a mistake. But then here in 1.5 you can see that also this is making mistakes in some occasions. But you can certainly get usable results with both of these render models. Here's the next example where I would say the differences are very small and you might use either of them. Now in the 1.5 models you see often more detail and this kind of warm orange light but I wouldn't especially say that this result is specifically better than this result because again these might just be different prompts. What I enjoy a lot about the 1.5 version is that we have here these reflections in the surface, but they are not happening all the time with all the images. I would certainly leave all of these models on your drive and test them out with your different prompts to see what gives you the result you like more and is closer to what you have imagined. Now in the next example with this sci-fi cyberpunk room here, 
we have actually a very interesting result because when you look here at the 1.4 models, you can see for all of them, no matter the render method other than DPM2 Keras, the elements in here and the architecture are not really working out. You can see here, especially with Euler Ancestral, doesn't really look that great, very little detail. Then here, the bed doesn't make any sense. And down here again, the bed doesn't make any sense unless we come down here where the elements start to make a little bit more sense. Also, the floor is nice with some details. However, when we look here at the 1.4 models, in a lot of cases, the furniture in the room makes some sense, especially when we go here to the other render models. You can see that this is actually a bed with some cushions here. And here you have kind of a sofa with a cushion. So you can imagine the details more and actually see what is going on in the room. Again, try out the different render methods. That's pretty important because you can see that the results are still vastly different. Now we come to in painting. And here, of course, what you want to do is to choose the in paint model and have that loaded. But you can also try out the other models to see what you get. And you also have down here the X epsilon plot script where you can try out the different render models, which are called checkpoint name and also the different other settings here, like the different samplers. But also what could be really interesting here is to try out the different denoising strengths or the CFG scale strengths. Of course, I have prepared examples for you. This is leaning on my deep fake Jennifer Lawrence video. Again, this is not meant to make a convincing deep fake. It's just to show you the technical abilities as an educational purpose. So here we have 1.4, 1.5 in painting, 1.5 the 7.2 gigabyte model and then the EMA only model. This is meant for image rendering. But you can see when you compare them, denoising here with 0.65. So this is taking a lot of the original image into consideration. The 1.4 model gives us a pretty good result, really like the eyes here and also the lighting. Everything works great. But down here where the mask is ending, we have a little bit of a hiccup. We have a little bit of a line where it doesn't look that good. And over here with the in painting model, you can see that the eyes are not that good. I would say I like them better from the 1.4 version, but the face is very nicely integrated in here. The neck also very nicely integrated. Interestingly enough, for the 1.5 and 1.5 EMA only, we have a similar result where we have this line here. And this is true also for the other settings for our denoising. You can see that this actually gets worse and worse with the denoising on the 1.5 model and on the 1.5 EMA only model. While the 1.4 model actually is still doing pretty well with a denoising setting of one which is surprising because this gives the prompt complete freedom to do whatever. And still this kind of fits, even though you can see here with the line up here with the line down there where the mask is ending, it's not working that well. But for the 1.5 in paint, you can see even though the eyes are now starting to be really messed up, this actually blends really well at the neck. Although we're starting to get these dark spots down here for some reason. So you can see here that one is a little bit too much and gives some crazy results. So reduce that a little bit, maybe between 6.5 and 8.5. Now the difference here is this is important for your in painting deep fake kind of attempts is when you are at 0 0.65, this is matching the skull shape, the original face shape a lot more. So you can see that the face here is rounder and wider in similarity to the original photo of the original model. While we go down here to 8.5, you can see that the face here now is a lot slimmer and closer to the original face shape of Jennifer Lawrence. So 
that is pretty interesting again from an educational standpoint so don't do anything crazy with that I also tried to do an impaint with a fox. Now this turned out to be a very small fox. Now the interesting thing is when we go down here to one is that the 1.5 in painting still works pretty well and it paints in here the original planks from that bench very nicely and then the fox on top of that while over here for the 1.5 with a denoising of one this is mostly replacing these planks and also over here for our 1.5 and 1.5 EMA only model we have a nice in painting of a fox although the fox doesn't really work that well but you can see here that this is creating some lines and some blurriness at the edges where I created the mask for that area so you can certainly see that while for the in painting you can't see anywhere where the mask started or ended no matter if the denoising is at one or if it is up here at 6.5. So these are actually pretty good results and I'm very happy with the Stable Diffusion 1.5 in painting. Now before you go, when you download my images on Stable Diffusion, go to PNG Info, that's pretty important. Then go to the folder with my files, drag this in here and then you have all of my settings here. Click on Send to Text to Image and this will load my different settings and also load the model. After this has loaded, go down here to the X Epsilon plot, set the checkpoint names, set the sampler names you want to have. Like I said, write them, for example, in here, Euler, comma, space, DDIM, comma, space, DPM2, comma, space, and so on. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you in my live stream on Sunday. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah, I wish you a good weekend.